Hi, Carol Taylor Carney here at Calhoun Arts, and I'm with Thomas Murray, and this is his beautiful painting, and he is going to introduce us to his painting. Oh, hi, I'm Thomas Murray. I'm an artist and, and a musician, and um, the painting Avion is uh, this series is started with the pandemic as I began losing, it's kind of serious. I mean, in, in one sense, it's a whimsical painting of a paper airplane. In another sense, it's letters to people that have gone away. Mm -hmm. And doesn't mean died, but certainly the idea of being separated from friends and family and the way we write letters or think of, think of them. And when each of these paintings was made with the idea of holding somebody in my mind and making the painting along with them. Oh, that's really that's interesting. Very, yeah, I like the idea that not only are they your muse, but in some way the muse is an active muse. Well, and it's conversational when you're collaborating. Like, conversation is a collaborative process, and we don't necessarily think of writing letters as that, but it is one of the ultimate collaborative. Mm -hmm. Correspondence was one of the ultimate collaborative processes. Absolutely. And the idea that in my head, there's always voices. Mm -hmm. Pain like this, pain like, you know, tutors, mentors, people yeah. I really look up to. And um, and letting those people go and allowing somebody into this studio space, this mental space, that is not so much critical as can be playful, honest, discourteous, courteous. <laughs> It runs, the, it runs the gamut, it, which in a lot of ways your painting's doing that too. On the one hand, I, it's this atmospheric space that I'm not sure if it is atmosphere, metaphor, smoke, what's going on. Then this very solid but moving airplane. And then all of a sudden, I have three red lines. Can you say something about the, the three comes ha, has been with me for a while, and it came with it in a residency in Assisi. Mm. So I was hanging out with St. Frank and the monks <laughs> up there. <laughs> and all the little animals that you love. All the little animals, the birds and the boars. You know, hopefully you don't see a boar when you're walking through the mountains. <laughs> and there are three knots that they have on their on their rope yeah. that they use around their, that they tie every morning. They have the the, the knots of poverty and chastity and obedience. Right. There used to be a fourth, and it had something to do with stability, but they were always moving, so they let go of the fourth. <laughs> they weren't dependable. <laughs> and certainly the Franciscans had their problems and issues yes. in their relationships with, with people. Um, and with the church. And with the church? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I was taught by Franciscan nuns. Were you? Okay. Yeah, okay. Assisi, actually. Are you? Right here in New Jersey. Nice. The, the, did you ever see the Porchin Cola? It's in Assisi. So okay. there's this little church where St. Frank used to hang out and where he chose actually to spend his last days and hours. And it was out on the plains and very small in the woods. And so I don't know which pope it was, but they decided to build a church in honor of his humility. Oh. <laughs> it was huge. Of course. This is the most humble person ever. Stand up and be humble. <laughs> and the... There, you can see the crowd going, yes, yes. <laughs> and it just seemed like it missed the point to me. Um, I did an exhibition in South Texas that was all about the portion cola and this kind of right. flip flopping and and uh, yeah because they go back to three simple tenets and so like right like right. not usually something you associate with a giant church absolutely yeah <laughs> and then there's the whole prayer of Saint Francis of Assisi make me a channel of your peace which wasn't written know. by him no. It was written by I don't know. It was found in a in a church in was it in Holland or or no? I'm wrong about that. But it wasn't written by him. No, no. Well, I think what happened is um, the quote "Make me a channel of your peace" came from him, and then after that, 
and get me a loaf of bread and forgive those who put trash in our baskets. And... Right, so it, yeah. Well, that's what happens when you're a hermit. You know, you, but live, I think that that's... you live off the land till you can't. But I also think that it's really appropriate, like the saying, make me a channel of your peace, even if you didn't say it for this specific piece. Yes. Because there is something peaceful in the conveyance. I'm glad. I'm glad that you see that. It's, yeah. It's part of, along uh, coincidentally with this series, is a um, series I did about, um, there was Dante and Virgil. Mm. Oh. <laughs> and so we love Dante, and we love, but I didn't get his politics. Like anybody he was upset with, they got a, their own level in hell. Of course. Right? It's like even Plato and Socrates, right? What are they doing in hell? Um, <laughs> not agreeing with Dante. Not obviously. agreeing with Dante, right? <laughs> and certainly Dante had had some things. But um, <laughs> So I did a series about Virgil, and this is also pandemic-related in that how do I help somebody? A buddy of mine was talking about um, Joseph, Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph, as my <laughs> grandmother would say. And Joseph, who's like, who, who is he? Oh, he's a he's a father, but or the dad, but not really the dad. But blah blah. Well, you know, that's the dad. Yeah, and my buddy said, well, you know what? Joseph was a stand-up guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but we don't hear about Joseph. Joseph said, um, whatever. We don't hear that. Yeah. So there's this idea that Virgil, who would walk around with Dante, and this is the guy that pissed you off, and this is the guy that, and um, this is Ugolino, we're going to have his children eat him, and you know, <laughs> Ugolino and his sons. Um, and and uh, But the, the pandemic, the idea of being there for somebody, the idea of, of uh, being with each other, even though we're not sitting in the same room. Right. I think is is a challenge and something that uh, that we need to focus on. And the idea of, of landscape or place, I don't want to create a specific place that we can say, oh, this is Collingswood. Right. I don't want to say this is a, a place. I want to talk about a space that we all inhabit. Yeah. Which is what you did with this very atmospheric area. And it, I take it then what then are the red lines, are they grounding? Are they something that pushes the viewer back? They were grounding for me. Okay. They were grounding for me when, in this dialogue mm -hmm. that I'm having, I'm like, okay, I'm creating space but no place. Right. And I'm feeling uncertain. I'm like, I want a red line there. Well, then I want two more, okay? This is the voice. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that relates to the St. Francis three. Right, Nine. right. Yeah. And yeah. Well, guys, and I think we should mention other something else that we thought was terrific about this is this is obviously for a show that's called Papers Work. Yes. And uh, you were one of the like, first like five submissions. And when we saw your submission, it came through and I was like, oil on canvas. Why? Oil on canvas. And then I looked at it and I was like, you funny, tricky little devil. Yeah. And we're like, we are, Mr. Subversion yeah. Yeah. And we're like, yeah. these are perfect. And because we want to talk about paper in any means, and yeah. these are so creative and, and they are very grounding, which is funny because you painted something in the air and yet it feels grounded and it feels surrounding and encompassing. Very, and I, go ahead. Oh, there is a little bit of that trickster in there as well. Let's see if you get it. Yeah. I love it. So, well, I hope you come to Palin Arts for papers work. Through the end of August. Oh. From right. the first week in June through the end of August. I know. Oh, not the end of August. The first week in August. First week in June to the end of August. No. So that's like First June, week in August. What is wrong with me? That's like June and July. Yes. Yeah. And so a little taste of August. Little taste and then uh and then some rest. Rest. It's yeah. too, it's too darn, which this is perfect for. Yeah. It's too darn hot in August. I think we should uh, all agree. Like, I mean, are you originally from Texas? No, I'm originally from St. Pete, Florida. Okay, oh. so wow, you really know hot. I know hot. I know muggy. I know three t shirts a day because I'm sweating. No so. wonder you can get atmosphere. That's exactly right. Yeah. So. 
clouds, the, the light, the color, <laughs> same in Texas, yeah. New Mexico. Very, very warm places. So, but in any case, we do hope that you'll come see this through the first week in August, uh, from June to the first week in August. Thank you for having me. Thank you so Thank much. You.